So following on from the previous videos, we're going to enhance some of the reports that we've done so far um, by including um, the city field. And the purpose of this video is we're going to look at parameters and how we would create a parameterized query. Because quite often you want the user to be able to select from a list of options and then the report will return based on what they've selected. Um, so we're going to start off small and then bit by bit through this video we're going to increase it and, and incrementally make it so we've got a drop down list and then we'll have a play around and see what we can actually do with parameters. Um, so first of all to save a bit of time if you um, want to follow along with me you can obtain the videos from here and if you go onto that site you'll need to um, log in or register um, and then go to the available post and you'll be able to download the um, zip files there. Um, so what are we going to do? Well we're going to fiddle around with this city field here. Now first of all let's just do a brief recap. Um, from the previous videos we created two reports. One which was called employee list and the other one was employee list real. What's the difference? Well employee list was this wizard approach whereas the real one is the one that we did off um, um, from scratch and that's the one I'm going to continue with here. So where do we go? Well the first things first is we really need to have a look at the base SQL again of what we actually scripted to get this um, information on the screen. So you can either right click on the um, D set, the data set that we've created here and choose the properties um, and you'll see it listed inside here. If you're in um, 2005 you would actually go into the data tab. Um, so here we are, we've got the actual script here, so I've taken the advantage of actually copying and pasting this out into um, SQL Server already and as you can see I've got the results here. Now specifically what we want to filter on here is the city field, so I'm going to go across and you can see we've got some very interesting names, Monroe, Everett, Redmond, Minneapolis. So what I want to do is is be able to parameterize it to allow um, the report to change the result set depending on what I choose. So what we do is we just start off in SQL so we just go on to a new line and we put in the WHERE clause and if you're not familiar with SQL there are other videos on my channel which will actually explain how to do WHERE clauses and select statements. So we're going to do city and we're going to say equals and then whatever. Now in our case we want it to be parameterized. Now in SQL as well as in bids the actual code is exactly the same. What you do is instead of actually putting in quotes because you're going to put in a literal we need it to have a parameter. So what we do is we'll just put in at and I tend to be a stickler for this because it's text I'll put in str at the beginning which means string and city and that will do. Now at the moment SQL will have a problem with that because it'll say hang on you haven't declared it. Well ultimately I'm not going to actually run it inside SQL Server I'm going to run it inside the reporting server. So what will happen is this if we just highlight it, copy it and then go back into bids again and go to the properties of that data set and where you've got the actual query just delete what's in there and paste in the new stuff and click on OK at which point it didn't really bat an eyelid. However, what we will find now is if we go into the parameters folder or if you're in 2005 that will be in the reports menu and parameters you will see that you'll have a new parameter there called STR city and it's basically saying what the heck is this? Well what we can do is if we go to the properties of that we can put in some um, more detailed information so at the moment it just says STR city well I'll just want it to be called city. And what is the data type that's going in there? Is it text? Is it boolean, i.e. true or false? Is it a date? Is it actually a number or is it a float? So the difference between those two is integer is a whole number, float is a decimal, but we don't know how many decimal places, so that's why it's called float. In this case, it's text, and I'm just going to click on OK. So if I now preview this report, you'll find now that I now get a drop, um, a little text box on here where I have to actually type in a city. So if I put in um, Everett and view, there we go, there's all the people in Everett, but we also had Monroe, didn't we? Um, now, do I spell this right? There we go, Monroe. But this actually really um, emphasizes an issue, is that spelling is not my forte so we need to really make sure that this is actually a drop down list instead so how is that done well let's go back into the design 
because we've defined our parameter, what we need to do is tell that parameter really, actually, don't allow the user to key in, have it in a drop down list. Now, the first thing for this though is we really need to define another data set. Now, the logic behind this is because if I'm clicking on a drop down arrow, where is it getting the data from? We need to give it a list of cities. So, what we'll do is if we just do new and do data set, and we'll call this um, D set city. And in the query section, we'll just say select distinct city from, and then I have a little bit of a snag here. What was the actual ta uh, the, the view called? There it is. So I'll just copy that. AdventureWorks Human Resources V employee. And OK. Now, if you're not familiar with what distinct is, distinct just means sh only return one of that value. Now, there were several Everett's, several Munro's uh, cities. Distinct just means return the one value, so it will actually get rid of duplication. So if I OK that, OK, I've got that city um, data set there now, but it's not going to do anything until I go back into the parameters and go into the properties. And what we then do is we go to the available values and then we say get the values from a query and in this case it's the city dset city and there's only one field in it so we choose that value and label um, why do we have both of those because label is what you want the user to see value is actually what it sends to the query so an example would be you may have as a label the employee name but the actual value would be the employee ID that you're actually submitting uh, to the query so we OK that, and let's have a preview now and let's see what happens. So now I have a drop down box, and if I click on there, there's all of my list of cities. Now, what you may have to do is actually put an order by on there as well to make sure they're in alphabetical order. But now all I've got to do is just click onto one of these, index as a city, very interesting. Um, but there we go, there's our employees that are in that particular city, and we can just keep going and going and going. And that basically is the most simplistic way of actually putting in the parameter. Now, there is a bit more to this, though, because at the moment we've now made it very, very specific, i.e. we must select a city. Now, what happens if I wanted to select all cities again, so I get everything returned? Well, what we need to do is we need to be a little bit more clever with the actual script. Now, the first thing is... And you really you'll have to lead by example here. You'll just have to follow me and then it will make sense. What we need to do is go back into the DSET city data source and just go back into the properties. But what I want you to do is at the um, beginning of this query, just press enter a couple of times. Because we're going to actually put in another select statement. And all I would like you to do is do select and then single quote the chevrons and just put in the word all and I'll just call it city so I'll do it properly as city and then in the line underneath it just put in union now what that's telling it to do is display the distinct city names but also put in an extra record with the word all and so now if I OK on that and preview we're not done um, but we now will see we've got all at the top. Now, why am I using a chevron? Just simply because in an alphabetical and numerical system, the chevrons always go to the top. So I always tend to use my parameters for the catch-all to have the chevrons because it always means it will um, filter up to the top. Now, at the moment, if I click on all and do view report, I'll get nothing back, no records here. The reason being is because there is no city called all. Well, that's the problem with our actual other data source the employees because if we just go to the properties of that again and scroll down to the where clause you'll see that we're just telling it to where the city equals whatever we actually tell it so what we need to do is we need to be a little bit more crafty so I'm going to open a bracket in front of city and at the end put in the word or and then copy the parameter and put it at the end and so then you say or city equals all and then close a the bracket. So the logic there is find the value in city but if it doesn't exist 
does it actually equal this? And in that case then, because it will equal all, it will ignore the first bit. So this bit will be ignored because I'm using all. So it's either at a specific city that I select, or it's going to be the all parameter that I've put in. So let's OK that. Let's preview again. And now when we click on the drop-down box, let's choose all and view report. And there we go. I've got all my records returning again. But what I could also do now is just choose a specific city like Berlin, and there's my record. So now you've made it completely customizable where you can actually tell it which city you want it to look at, all of them or just a specific one. Now, the only final thing I'll point out is if I go back to the design view and then back into preview, um, actually, let me just change something slightly here. The reason I'm just moving it slightly is because that will then tell it it'll have to re-render from scratch. So when I go into preview, when you first open up the report, you'll see that City just says select a value. It would be nice if it had a default value in there to start with. Well, no problem. We just go back to design. We need to go to the parameter again. So again, 2005, you need to go to the reports menu um, and go to the parameter properties. And then you'll see there's another option here called default values. So select that, and then we specify the value that we want, and we'll add it. And what's the value? Well, it's all. And OK. So now, if I preview it, by default, it automatically runs, and you can see I've got all my records back. So now I can select, do whatever I want, but I now have a specific parameter. So from start to finish, what have we learned here? Well, we've learned that to define a parameter into our SQL, we use the at symbol and then whatever name you would prefer. I tend to always put the first three characters to indicate the type of data type it's going to be, just so when I'm in the report builder here, I know that it's a string because I've put it as str. So uh, numbers, int, floats, etc. Um, dates I do dt and stuff like that just so it's much easier for me to see. But remember once you've put that parameter in you need to make sure that you change the prompt to the user friendly name that you want it to actually show. So with that at symbol done we can then just run the report there and then and the parameter will work. However we then added to that by putting in another data set down here, D set city, but we added a little bit to this particular data set to include the all option. So that gave the option on the drop down box of all. I used the chevrons to make sure that it goes to the top. And then finally, all we then did is run it. And lo and behold, we've now got the results we're after. So I hope this helped. Um, parameters, that's not by any means um, the end of parameters. However, it is a very good starting point to go on. So you can keep adding more and more to it. So have a play and see how you get on. Thanks for watching.